Last piece is metros are driving innovation. Going back to an initial point I made, in a perfect world, which obviously we've never lived in, but in a perfect world, you would have a national government, right? And a national government would set a platform for productive innovation, innovative and export growth. It would do smart things on trade, it would do smart things on taxes and currency and immigration and all the rest of those platform setting things that national governments are supposed to do. Um, we don't really have that national government now and, and it's not entirely clear to me that we'll have one you know, anytime soon. Um, and that, you know, I'm a pragmatist, so it's just, just deal with reality here. So in my view, we're going to have to reshape the economy from the ground up. The cities and metros that are the engines of the national economy are going to actually have to act like the engines they are and begin to take purposeful and deliberate steps to reshape and restructure the economy. We're working with a whole bunch of metros around the country right now um, and a few governors a few governors, because states half the time seem to be on a similar frolic and detour, um, with, with taking business planning and bringing it to the city and metropolitan level. So this is the discipline of private sector business planning, which companies do so well, and taking it to metropolitan economic development. That starts obviously with a market assessment, very much off those dashboards I was showing you before. What are you good at? You know, what are your competitive assets, attributes, and advantages? And who are your competitors in the world? And are the sectors and clusters that you're in poised for growth, or are you going some re through restructuring? What are your goals and strategies at the metropolitan scale? And what are actionable initiatives that you could actually carry out? So let's not have a report that's shelfware. Let's have a report that actually is implemented. Um, so we have to get the financing and capital. And, and last piece is how do you collaborate to compete? At the end of the day, the federal government is a government. The state government is a government. Cities and metropolitan areas are networks of government, corporations, universities, skilling institutions, providers like neighborhood centers. That's why cities and metros run the world, because they're not run by government, they're run by networks. And we're in a century where networks run everything, uh, where everyone needs to be network literate, so to speak, to succeed. So in LA, um, we went through this business planning model if you think you've got problems, go to L.A. I mean, L.A. is about the most fragmented place I've been in a long time. It's so big, like Houston. So you have all these different centers of activity, and, you know, the first thing you, anyone tells you when you get there is no one talks to anyone. Um, so we got all these groups together to finally talk to each other and to focus on one thing everyone could agree on, which is we should export more. Um, and L.A. does understand exports, either out of Hollywood or out of their manufacturing sector. Um, very much related to defense. Uh, Northeast Ohio, much more cohesive kind of leadership structure, worked with many different um, institutions, public, private, civic, not just in Cleveland, but in Youngstown, in Akron, in Canton. And if LA, the focus was on exports, the focus on Northeast Ohio was recharging their manufacturing sector, retooling for new products, particularly sustainable products, and then retraining workers. So these business plans are producing actionable strategies in, that differ from different parts of the country because the starting point's different. If metros actually innovate and if they actually move from just a service model to an economy shaping model, right, then they could advocate nationally um, with, with some legitimacy. 